In this example, we'll demonstrate two simple designs using Phi, starting from scratch. By scratch, in most cases, it actually means that I'll start with a simple shape, a cube in this case, where I'll set the dimensions to 50 centimeters. Of course, you can rotate it, zoom in and out, all the normal navigations you'd expect from a 3D design tool. But where Phi deviates is that you can deform edges or move vertices by clicking and dragging. We'll rotate using these standard viewpoints, and we can change the workspace to include shadows. These shadows can help give you a better understanding of the body's shape. In addition, you can rotate in increments using the arrow keys for more precise control. But let's return to the task at hand and undo the changes previously made. We'll take a look at where we want this to end up. This shape, which could be an essential oil diffuser, a perfume bottle, a vase, etc. With that in mind, we'll box select the top and hit the P button for pop out, which creates an extrusion of the selected face. As I do, I can snap to a specified dimension, and I'll do the same at the bottom. Now I'll select the end face of this body. By pulling on this sphere, I can resize it. If the shift key is pressed, the resize is then proportional. I can also rotate it, and as you can expect, each handle will do a different type of manipulation. Let's back it up one more time. This time, I'll take advantage of the scale dialog to scale precisely at 40% along the x-axis. I'll do the same on the other side, but this time I'll use the proportional checkbox. At this point, I want to note that the deformed edges have assumed an S-shape because of the tangencies. We can smooth the selected edges using the fair command, which I'll repeat a handful of times, taking advantage of the strength option, and shift-click to get entire loops. Fixing loops is a surefire way to avoid inadvertent changes. And now, I can select all four chains and fair them with high influence to give me a smooth and elegant shape. Changing materials can help us visualize curvature, and all in all I'm happy with the results thus far. With that, I'm ready to send the model to Onshape, which can be done in just a click or two. This adds a new tab within the document where I can continue to refine the design. We'll add some fillets and use Onshape's own abilities to visualize the curvature with the changes made. As it turns out, however, our manufacturing engineer has asked that the top face be made circular to cut costs and reduce complexity from their standpoint. Making this change in Onshape and maintaining curvature would be near impossible. Instead, we can jump back into Phi, select the face, and use the circular command. After sending it back to Onshape, we can watch this update live and the downstream features will still apply. Obviously, more aggressive changes might not be handled quite as easily, but it depends on what needs to change and what downstream features have been added. Now let's switch gears into something a little less cerebral. Something a little closer to home, like a dual-purpose pepper and salt grinder. To make this, I'll start with another primitive, this time a cylinder. Then, to help guide the design, I can bring in a conceptual sketch, or image. I'll select the entire body with a shift-click and hit M to adjust the position of the cylinder. After a proportional scale, I can add extra vertices around the cylinder. With that complete, We'll copy and paste the body as we'll want to reuse it at a later time, sliding it to the side temporarily. With the primary body, I'll stretch the bottom face down to the extent of the concept image, and then again with shift pressed. I'll do a proportional scale to match the concept again. So with that done, we'll move on to one of the branches, starting with some simple rotations and translations, and a small scaling operation to get it roughly into position. Now again, I'll select the bottom face and hit M for move, and use the L key to adopt a local coordinate system before pulling the face. Then I can either mirror this branch, or copy and move it similar as before. Because I may want to deviate from full symmetry later, I'll copy, but also note that symmetry can be added and removed at any time. I then remove edges and vertices from corresponding faces of the cylinder, and bridge between the semicircle faces. The next blend can be created by dissolving away the four selected faces, but the results don't quite capture the intent, so we can add edges to adjust the curvature. 
This will be done on the front and back, and after which we can remove other edges that might be causing too much influence on the shape. This causes a depression in the transition face, but we'll fix that in a moment. Before we do, we'll fix the areas of the design that we don't want influence with additional changes. Then proceed to add tangencies to the free edges. To make additional adjustments, we'll again take advantage of the fairing option, using the highest strength. This will give the edges the optimal shape based on the tangencies. And lastly, we'll inflate them to the maximum, using shift drag to achieve the final result. But not really. With this type of design, it's so easy to explore alternatives and push designs in ways that were difficult before. Let's have a little fun and edit this some more. I'll unfix this part and pull it out a bit. In doing so, we see some waviness develop. To fix this, we'll once again take advantage of the fairing command. We'll fair a selected number of edges, which irons out the waviness, but taking it further, we can fair all the edges and the loop, which results in an almost entirely new shape. At any time, these designs can be taken to Onshape to add additional downstream features related to the manufacturing process and overall mechanics of the system. I hope these examples give you an idea of the Phi workflow, but we have plenty more examples, training videos, and tutorials available on our website. Thanks for watching.